the UK is one of the largest users of illegal drugs in Europe. In 2018, one in five 16 to 24 year olds admitted to taking drugs within the past year. And this hasn't come without its problems. I don't blame anyone for what happened. It was her choice, she did it, she wasn't stupid. When we have some of the most stringent drug laws in the world, why is it then that UK ecstasy related deaths have reached an all time high? It's just so outdated. And I think it's outdated because of this big taboo, the big stigma on drugs. With the rise of super strength drugs and substances being missold across the country, revolutionary drug testing facilities are finally providing us with a more valuable and safer approach towards combating the age old stigma on drugs. Companies such as The Loop, a non-profit organisation providing confidential drug testing, welfare and harm reduction services for users are allowing us to talk more freely about drug use. We have come to speak to one of the faces behind The Loop to find out how they are altering the way in which we talk about drug use as a country. So The Loop is a drug safety testing organisation operating in the UK and that means that we go to events and city centres to offer a publicly accessible drug safety testing service. Somebody can come in and drop off a sample and uh, a little bit later they come and talk through the result with a healthcare professional of what that sample was and what that means to them. One of the phrases that we use to describe the service is multi-agency safety testing and this reflects the one of the really important aspects of the service is that it is not just about the loop and what the loop does, we are also working together with other agencies on site, so that's the police and the medics and the welfare team to help best safeguard the public who are at an event or members of the public who live in or are visiting a city. So when we're doing the analysis, we have about 85% of the substances are what people expect, but in the remaining 15% of situations, that sample is not what the person expects it to be. And so we see about 10 to 20% of people using the service will actually give us the sample uh, so that we can destroy it because they no longer have any interest in taking it. We visited the loop at Boomtown Fair Music Festival in Winchester to see how their services work from a user's point of view and their plan for this year's festival season. So this is the reception area of the Loops tent and this is the place where service users can come in and drop off a sample of a substance of concern so that we can analyse it. The way that this works is that they will take a little scoop of a powder or a whole pill and on the label on the outside of the bag they give us some information about the sample. It's really important to us to understand when a substance is being missold because that makes it a lot harder for people to understand and mitigate the risks associated with that substance. The first thing that happens to a sample is it's taken out of the bag that it was put in previously and we document it, we record what the service user said about it and take a photograph and weigh it. Once that cataloging process is finished, we transfer it for infrared spectroscopy. This is a really valuable technique to us, which tests a sample within about two minutes. The chemist will then use their expertise to understand and think about what additional analysis now needs to be done on that. So we have a chemical separation process, which allows us to pull apart the binder from the active ingredient or components in the different mixture, cocaine and a cutting agent, and allows us to test each one of them separately, which again helps us to get a really strong and accurate signal for them. It is a reality whether we like it or not, and has been for a very long time, is that people will take drugs. Festivals are a really interesting and helpful place to offer testing because there are thousands of people in place for one weekend. There's a very high concentration of people that are likely to need the service. The problem with that is that it is only accessible to people who have got 100, 200 pounds of disposable income plus all the expenses that they need to go to that event so we've brought in the city centre testing as a way to be able to reach a much wider population of people who still need to use that service. They still need to have substances tested and they still have huge benefit to be had from bringing them into contact with a healthcare professional. 
Certainly, at the moment, the Conservative government's policy is that drugs are illegal and therefore they don't want to hear or do anything about it. Their advice is just don't take drugs. Uh, is not working. The number of drug deaths that we're seeing have increased year on year since 2010. We are at a record high of drugs when you look at the number of people using drugs, which has actually fallen slightly. She was um, extremely stubborn, loud, obnoxious, um, but also very caring, very family, animal orientated. She was very excited. So we'd heard about for about the last month. Her older sister was going as well. So we'd hear about it all the time at home. Um, and she had the weekend off work because of it. So again, that was a bonus. Her and her sister both got ready here. They got dropped off, um, her sister at a friend's house and Georgia got dropped straight down at the grounds at about 12 o'clock, I think they got picked up. Um, her sister then called us at around five o'clock uh, and said, Mum, Georgia's fitting, um, and passed me over to a paramedic who explained that she was uncontrollably fitting. As far as they were aware, she'd taken two pills. Uh, so we arrived at the grounds, um, and just as we got through to the tent, um, the ambulance was parked around the side and literally saw her feet being loaded in. Um, and her sister sort of passed me her, her belongings. She initially kept going in and out of consciousness, and which is how they know that she took two pills. They managed to get that out of her. Um, and then after a little while, she started fitting. Um, the fits were due to high temperature. The, the pills caused the temperature to give, um, sorry, the, the body to give like a false reading and your temperature goes sky high. Um, she fitted for, I believe, just under 50 minutes uncontrollably they no matter what they gave her it, it, they couldn't stop it the consultant came through and he explained to me that what happens is because the body fitted for so long um, the brain is obviously starved of oxygen so the brain already starts to shut down but also um, the muscles in the body because it's such violent fitting they dissolve basically and when the muscle dissolves, it turns the blood acidic. This then obviously goes around your whole body, um, which causes heart to stop and things like that, at which point I think our heart had stopped twice. Um, he then went back off, um, came back about half an hour later, said, um, did I know exactly what she'd taken? I said, no, all I know is these two pills. He then said her heart had stopped another two times and if I wanted to get family members down to get them down because it wasn't looking good. Um, he came back again a third time, probably about another half an hour later um, and said basically we can't do anything now. Her heart has stopped yet again and we've really struggled to get it going. But her lungs were then starting to fill with blood, stomach acid, vomit. Um, there wasn't anything else they could do. So we had to go and turn the machine off. Um, and she was, she died at 20 past eight. So in that three hours um, from getting the phone call, that's it, she was gone. Drug testing, I think is, some people say it's a stick in plaster. Maybe it is, but in my eyes, it's another barrier. It's something else to make people think twice. Um, if drugs are sold as they should be at the doses, with the ingredients they should be, you wouldn't have a lot of these problems, but they're not. It's just so outdated. And I think it's outdated because of this big taboo, the big stigma on drugs. 
Um, I don't quite understand. I don't know what the answer is, but I don't understand why there's this big stigma on drugs, and I think that stops a lot of these things being able to change. If people have that education, they can then make informed choices, and that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. You can't make an informed choice if you haven't got a clue what you're taking or how to take it. Dr Adam Winstock is the founder of the Global Drug Survey. We caught up with him on a Skype call to see the figures around who is using drug safety facilities and his thoughts on how revoking a venue's licence doesn't work. In the UK last year when we looked at it, it was about 12% of people um, said they'd used any form of drug checking technology and three quarters of the time that was kind of a, a colour reagent testing kit. Um, so people using fixed site testing, things like the loop, was still a minority uh, of people. Um, about three years ago, we asked people whether or not they would use drug testing services if they were available, and that was about 65% of people. Um, so it's something that people want. And certainly when we asked people last year about front-of-house testing, overwhelmingly, they rated them as being professional, information being given in a way that was easy to understand. And although a lot of the time they said the harm reduction advice that was being given reinforced what they already knew, one of the things I was really interested to find out is a lot of people were sharing that reinforced information. You know, and it's like any health behaviour change. We need it repeated. We need to hear it from different sources. So... Um, you know, those services were valued and the information was taken on board and it was very often shared. You know, what you want is to be able to have someone who runs a club or a pub to see there's a drug problem um, and to be able to go to the police and say, you know, I think we've got some problems with drugs. Could you come and help us? I think that actually licenses should be given to pubs, clubs and, and festivals only if they can demonstrate they're providing a safe environment for drinkers and people who use drugs. Like, that should be mandatory. You don't have a first aid tent. You don't have harm reduction information on your website. You haven't trained all your bar staff in how to spot risk and respond to that appropriately for drugs or alcohol. You don't get your license. I mean, it should be the absolute the other way around. I think if a venue wishes to offer drug testing as an added value service, then I don't think there should be impediments to that. Drug safety testing may be viewed negatively by some. However, it is providing a support network that is reducing risk at both events and within city centres. Drugs will always be around us. We can't enforce pill producers to standardise a pill, but what we can do is support each other, test and educate users in a bid to prevent fatalities nationwide. It is about time that we, as a generation, start to apply different methods of support. We need to change our outlook on the whole subject, allowing a less outdated approach towards drug use within the 21st century. It is time to test, time to educate, it's time to talk and it's time to do the right thing. Look out for each other. <laughs>